Heard my little sis is buying a car. You'll need my secret guide. Gross, no way. I already used Capital One Auto Navigator. I bet your credit score wasn't impacted at all. So, ha. I got my real rate and monthly payment, had an amazing test drive at the dealership, and made the purchase. Taking the easy way out. That's so you. Still not getting it. That's so you. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Terms and conditions apply. Find out more at CapitalOne.com slash Auto Navigator. Hi, welcome to your neighborhood pharmacy. Hi, I've got a prescription for diabetes test strips. How much is the copay? Well, it depends on your type of commercial insurance and factoring in your yearly spend, subtracting the deductibles, also depending on your monthly Ugh, allowance. Why can't there be a better option? Or you could try Contour Next Test Strips. A 35 counts only $19.99 over the counter and proven to be highly accurate. Go to contournext.com slash radio to see if over the counter strips are a more affordable option for you. Hmm, I think I'll try Contour Next. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. Um, I hope everybody's doing all right out there. It's been a little while since I've done a solo episode because I took a little bit of a break over the summer. Um, Just been doing a lot of reflection and healing and uh, a lot of change physically, mentally, spiritually. and with my diet as well. So that's what this episode is going to be about. Um, I've been sharing more about my journey about leaving veganism on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, um, my Instagram is gabloveflow. So I've been sharing more about this over there. And I feel like I'm ready to share about this because I've been pretty quiet about it uh, over the last like eight or nine months. I really haven't shared really anything about what I've been doing. Um, and I really wanted to go over like how the last couple years has been for me with my healing journey and leaving veganism. And um, you guys asked a lot of questions over on Instagram, so I'm gonna answer some of those as well. And I'm gonna kind of walk you through my process of you know why I decided to leave veganism, you know, where I was at with my health last year uh, and the year before it was really really bad i mean my hashimoto's was the worst it's ever been Um, my my thyroid was the worst it's ever been last summer was the worst i mean absolute worst Um, this is when i was living in miami last year and it was just torture i mean the amount of symptoms that i was living with day in day out um, i just thought i was gonna feel like shit for the rest of my life at that point so this episode has been um, brewing inside of me. It's been, you know, cooking. And I have a lot of notes, so I'm tr- going to try to be as organized as possible. But I wanted just to share with you guys because you have been asking me, you know, like, you know, what foods did you introduce first? And, you know, why are you not vegan anymore? And how do you feel when you eat, when you eat meat now? And, you know, how, how can you eat meat? without feeling bad and all these questions are really really great questions and um, I'm going to start from where I felt in um, the winter of 2021 when winter and spring of 2021 so over a year ago um, I was not doing well my Hashimoto's antibodies were really high I was dealing with a lot of symptoms my thyroid was tanked Um, At this point, I was living at home um, in Tampa with my mom and her husband. Um, I was really trying to find an endocrinologist who would even, like, listen to me. Um, And I ended up finding a a doctor that would prescribe me LDN, which is low-dose naltrexone. Um, Low-dose naltrexone is for people who have a lot of inflammation. Um, it's, it's commonly prescribed for people with Hashimoto's um, because it definitely decreases uh, inflammation markers. And the reason why I wanted to go on LDN was because I actually tried to go back on um, synthetic thyroid medication 
a little bit before then. So when I, it was like the spring of 2021 and I, I gave it a shot again, even though I knew it was going to make me feel like shit. Um, so I, I tried Synthroid because that's what my doctor, uh, the endocrinologist that I found, um, basically forced me to do. Um, and then I, so I did that and I immediately felt a lot worse. So I knew that my body cannot handle uh, synthetic thyroid medication. So I finally found this LDN doctor. Um, I, I'll link the website in the show notes. It's an online service and you just pay them to have an over the phone or video consultation. Um, so once I started taking the LDN, things started to feel like like they were shifting for me. But at this time, I was you know still vegan, still plant based. I was eating a lot of raw vegetables. <laughs> I mean, my entire diet was raw vegetables, hummus, um, things with lots of nightshades and lectins and oxalates. And um, there's nothing wrong with raw vegetables, but for me. I was coming from a place of extreme, extreme digestional issues, SIBO, parasites, um, obviously the autoimmune symptoms, which manifested in swelling, um, leg edema, um, lipedema. I, you know, I, I felt like I had lipedema, um, and this is something that I've been dealing with for a while. But lower body swelling, water retention, extreme, extreme pain and and joint swelling in my lower body um, especially but really the the inflammation and the swelling would be everywhere it would be in my shoulders my arms I felt like I was just holding so much heaviness in my body Um, and I'm going to get more into that into those symptoms because last summer was the worst so I'm going in chronological order and I'm going to try to make this episode short and sweet and not too long. So I was not properly medicated with my thyroid and I wasn't eating um, I wasn't eating for my digestion. I was everything I was eating and everything I was doing was actually working against me. So the raw vegetables, the extreme volume of, of raw salads and um, lots of garlic and onion and, and all these vegetables that I thought were healthy, and they are healthy, right? But not for me um, and my body because my body was trying to fight an autoimmune condition and thyroid and adrenal fatigue and all of these uh, underlying issues that were only just getting worse because of the way that I was nourishing myself. Um, But how was I supposed to know that? Because the way that we are taught um, is that eat your vegetables, eat your fiber, eat lots of vegetables, don't eat red meat, don't eat lots of meat, blah, blah, blah. Um, So I was just doing that and I was eating a lot of carbs because of my vegan diet. And I I didn't realize I was eating so many carbs in the form of fruit and veggies and beans and hummus and pumpkin. And I mean, when I think back to how I used to eat, not that this is a bad way of eating, and I guess I'll put a trigger warning here before I get any deeper into this conversation. If you're struggling with an eating disorder and the talk about um, foods and elimination diets and cutting out foods or how certain kinds of foods um, may make someone react, I'm going to speak from my personal experience this entire episode. Um, but if that kind of stuff really triggers you and really bothers you and you, um, it's not good for you right now to listen to any um, experiences around food, then maybe this episode isn't for you just yet um, because I'm going to be talking a lot about how these foods made me react and food sensitivities and intolerances and how I felt once I started taking them out. So just a little bit of a trigger warning for anybody who's struggling with an eating disorder who is um, you know, just not in the right frame of mind to think about restricting or eliminating, even though that's not what I'm doing. I actually really feel like I'm, I'm honoring my body by not consuming these foods because these foods were keeping me very, very sick and inflamed and swollen and fatigued. So there's the trigger warning. Um, so as as we moved into the summer uh, of 2021, I 
started to feel even worse. <laughs> and I also moved to Miami to um, sublet a, a, a room in, a, in an apartment. And it was very, very stressful for me going back to Miami um, and trying to get my life back together, right? So it was a lot of physical and emotional stress that I was going through and my thyroid was completely, completely fucked. Um, it was the worst it's ever been. I wasn't, I couldn't find a doctor to prescribe me the armor thyroid, the natural desiccated thyroid that I um, had been hearing about. And at that time, um, I was kind of iffy about taking armor because it is natural desiccated thyroid from pig glandular. So again, I wasn't, I was still vegan at the time. Um, and I was doing the podcast, and at that time I was interviewing people like Karen Martell and um, hormone experts because I was trying to find answers, um, and I was trying to figure out what to do because I felt like such shit. Um, and I remember when I found Karen Martell's podcast, this was um, in the summer, like maybe June, July and of last year, and I was outside by the pool just trying to get some sun and and feel better and my entire body was swollen so this symptom has been plaguing me for a long long time now and uh so my entire body was swollen i had gained weight i had gained i don't know how much weight i gained i don't really weigh myself i haven't weighed myself in years but i'm gonna assume i gained 15 pounds and on my short frame that's a lot <laughs> um, for me that's a lot so i was freaking out. I didn't understand why my digestion was so messed up, bloating, fatigue, full body swelling, inflammation. There were days where I felt like my body was filled with cement. And I don't, I never heard anybody say it like that, but it's literally for me, that's what it felt like to the point where when, when I would walk around, like if I was running errands, I would literally feel like there was heavy cement just gudge in my thighs, in my in my legs, and like it just was so physically uncomfortable. So I thought the way to combat that, which is was very wrong, um, so don't make this mistake, but I would go to the sauna every single day and I would overdo it in the sauna and I would stretch in the sauna and I would just like, I would, pretty much just beat the shit out of myself in the sauna for several hours and I would take breaks obviously and drink lots of water but at that time I was not consuming any electrolytes I wasn't consuming the element packets that I, I am so um, that I love so much and I was just downing water and that was depleting my body of all of the potassium the sodium the magnesium and my lab work actually reflected that. Um, it came back saying that I was super dehydrated. My chloride was like super um, high, apparently. I, and I think that's because I was using the sauna so much. So I was, I was physically um, ruining my adrenals by doing the sauna. And this is when I was living in Miami in the summer. So it was already hot. I was pushing my body to the limits by going on these jogs and these long walks but I would I would pretty much try to jog just outside in the Miami heat um, to lose weight and to you know feel better in my body and to figure out why you know my my logic was if I work out then I will lose weight and I'll feel better and this swelling and this inflammation won't be as bad anymore um, so I was doing everything I could to lose weight, to feel better, to fix my thyroid, but like simultaneously, everything that I was doing was actually making my thyroid levels and my hormone levels and my adrenals worse. But I kept continuing doing what I was doing, obviously. I didn't, I didn't know any better yet. I wasn't listening to podcasts about um, how veganism can affect your gut. And it wasn't until I interviewed Karen Martell on my podcast, and then I interviewed um, a woman about eating disorder recovery, uh, Mindy, Mindy Pulzer, and um, Karen Martell basically told me that I needed to try to take um, Armor, natural desiccated thyroid, and 
I kept hearing about it and Dr. Amy Horniman, I was listening to her podcast as well. Uh, and I was learning a lot from her podcast and Al Russ and, you know, <laughs> funny enough, I was listening to these podcasts while I was in the sauna or working out, you know. So while I was literally um, ruining my body, I was listening to these podcasts about healing the thyroid and and thyroid medications. <laughs> and eventually, I think just listening to those podcasts enough got through to me and like eventually it kind of just clicked and I was like well what I'm doing right now isn't working and I need to be on medication because I need to know if it's going to help me feel better and I I need to know if armor is going to help me feel like a human again I mean I felt like such shit and I could barely even teach yoga sometimes there were there were days where I just I couldn't even teach and I had to call out and get a sub and that's because of the, the fatigue and the swelling and the pain and the joint, you know, it's just, it was impossible for me to function. Um, so once October came around, um, I remember I, I had the worst period of my life. Um, TMI, I don't, you know, sorry if this is too much information, if you're a guy listening, whatever, I'm not going to really get deep into it, but it was the the worst cycle I've ever had and this was almost a year ago now and uh, I just remember I was like I cannot live like this anymore I need to find somebody who will prescribe me armor so I um I did I, I found a friend of mine who is a nurse practitioner and she actually wrote me a prescription for it and then I found um uh my endocrinologist who I had been seeing for a while Um, I made an appointment with her again and I told her how crappy I felt and how I was not willing to be on synthetics anymore and that I just wanted to try armor. So she um, agreed, but that endocrinologist kept me sick because she kept me under medicated for so long. Um, So I started armor after that um, really, really bad menstrual cycle. Um, I remember I was in California when that happened, the, the menstrual cycle, and I was in so much pain. Um, my, my stomach had never been in so much pain and bloating and gas before, um, and the swelling, uh, the full body swelling was just insane at that point, and I remember I was wearing my jeans, uh, and they were super, super tight, and these, je- these jeans are actually like my loose pair of jeans that usually... Lo- like fits very loose and like comfortable and these jeans were tight and I said I can't live like this anymore um everything I'm doing is not working and I need to assess and I need to try this armor and that's pretty much when I you know when my mind shifted from being vegan and I said you know what okay I'm still vegan I'm still plant-based but I'm going to allow myself to take this armor thyroid which is derived from pig glandular because I've heard it helps people and I just bit the bullet and I did it. So I took armor um, at, you know, increased the dose um, on my own every, you know, few weeks. And I did interview Dr. Amy Horniman on the podcast when I was on the armor and she she offered some really solid advice. Um, the armor did not really help me feel better. Uh, I think initially it made me feel a little bit better, but then it just kind of went away and my hair started falling out like crazy. Um, and I have read that armor has that side effect of extreme hair loss and shedding. And for me, um, it was like instant, you know, when I look at pictures of myself back, um, before I started taking the armor, um, my hair was nice and long and thick. Um, but I also think that being vegan, um, definitely caused my skin and my hair to react. I had really bad acne. Um, I was dealing with really, really, really bad acne. And since, you know, not being vegan anymore, my skin has cleared up a lot. So I will get into that. But, um, after six months of being on armor, Uh, I decided it just wasn't working anymore, and I started talking to my friend Alex, who I'm going to actually have on the podcast, and she 
she's a follower of mine and she dm'd me and we started talking about thyroid and then um we got each other's numbers and we just we've been you know talking about thyroid with each other and helping each other and she's the one who told me to try nature throid because um that's the only medication that helped her and she also started telling me that when she was vegan that's when she felt the worst so again i just kept having these people come into my life and offer their wisdom and tell me that veganism um, can really wreak havoc on your body so as this kept continuing to happen and listening to podcasts about how important eating meat is and how detrimental it is to consume large quantities especially of raw vegetables i mean what the fuck um so now it's uh december of 2021 so you know last winter and i decided that i needed to get a a dietitian slash life coach and i remember I found this woman um, on my birthday. I was in the sauna of all places, right? Because I could not stop using the sauna because I thought that that was going to help me miraculously. And it did give me some sense of relief physically, um, but it never lasted because it was down the road detrimenting my adrenals and my thyroid and my hormones. And my body was in, always in like a fight or flight shock survival mode. I mean, everything I was doing was making my body freak out and um, really just think it was under attack, which it was. The sauna, the running, the the stress, the figuring out where I'm going to live, the teaching yoga, the, you know, I mean, it was just nonstop, never-ending drama in my body. And of course, my body was going to be inflamed and fat and swollen and you know, in pain. As many of you guys know, I've been openly sharing my healing journey with PCOS and hypothalamic amenorrhea and hormonal imbalance. That's why I'm super excited to be partnering up with Ovacetol. Thousands of women swear by Ovacetol and it's for a good reason. Ovacetol is a highly researched blend of inositols and it's by Therologix. It's designed to promote healthy hormonal health and support regular menstrual cycles, ovarian health, and fertility. I have been using Ovacetol. It's a powder that you put in juice or water. It doesn't taste like anything and you take it twice a day and it is supposed to help regulate my cycles, hopefully bring back my menstrual cycle and just help with hormonal imbalance in general, especially with folks who are struggling with PCOS. Your estrogen could be tanked, your testosterone could be skyrocketed, and it's really hard to get through day-to-day chores and just function with those hormonal levels being so crazy and out of whack. Ovacetol is gluten-free, vegan, and it's the only independently tested and certified inositol supplement available. Did you know that Theralogix offers several other evidence-based, independently certified nutritional supplements for women's health? They have so many supplements on their website. It's really awesome. And this company is high-grade supplements. I made a choice last year that I'm only going to start taking really high-grade, potent, tested supplements instead of all the junk that I was buying from like Amazon and Walmart. So that is one of my goals this year is to really stay taking high quality vitamins and supplements. I am trying a few supplements from the Theralogic site. I'm doing an Omega. I have a CBD supplement. I'm doing a women's multivitamin that helps with menstrual cramps and PMS and it has iron in it. So there's supplements for literally everyone on this website. It's amazing. Um, So whether you are aiming for a healthier lifestyle or you're ready to start a family, Theralogix has a wide range of products for you. So go to Theralogix.com, that's 
T-H-E-R-A-L-O-G-I-X.com and you can use the provider referral code 233136 at checkout and that will save you up to 20% off of your purchase on Ovacetol or any other supplements on the website that support your overall health. So go ahead to Theralogics.com and you, you can use the provider code 233136 at checkout to save 20% off your purchase. And when I say the word fat, I know that I'm not fat, but for me, um, my body was not at a weight that felt like it was supposed to be. (laughs) I felt very, very uncomfortable. Um, And now that I'm looking back at that, I know that that was because my body was reacting so harshly to how I was eating and what I was doing. So again, everything I was consuming and everything that I was doing was actually causing harm to my immune system and only exacerbating the Hashimoto's, the thyroid, the adrenal fatigue, and and everything else, the digestion. I remember um, I was starting to do ice baths every day a couple times a day. At that point, I was just leaving the ice in the bathtub with the cold water and I would just leave it there because I was I was hopping in there a few times a day because of how swollen and in, inflamed and how, how much pain I was in in my lower body. So, you know, the ice baths, they were helping a little bit, but um, at that time, I was also connecting with my friend Leonella who has a practice in Miami and I was, you know, she was telling me that I needed to stop, you know, all the stress. And um, I think she also told me that being vegan isn't help helpful. Um, but I kept doing what I was doing. And then eventually I did hire the dietitian life coach. And to be honest, it was not the best experience because they said that they had experience working with people with eating disorders and metabolism and thyroid and hormones. Um, But the way that they kind of told me to eat was not helping me. Um, At this time, I was really starting to learn about the keto diet and low carb and how it can help with autoimmune. Um, Dr. Amy Horneman is very, very... um, you know, she's a big, big believer and big um, researcher in the keto diet and like paleo. So I was doing a lot of research on this. I was listening to podcasts about keto and I realized that I was going to try to take down the carbs. Um, so I did that and I immediately felt better. Um, and my dietitian slash life coach kept telling me that I needed to eat carbs because my body needed them. Um, And she was not listening to what I was saying, how I felt better without the carbs, how I instantly felt this relief. Um, I I lost, you know, a few pounds, what what it felt like of swelling and water retention, because that's very normal when you go keto. Um, So I started just telling her, like, look, I'm, I'm going to, increase my fat and my protein, but I'm not going to do the carbs. So at this point, um, I was like, okay, so what's making me react like this, you know? So I took a food sensitivities test (laughs) and lo and behold, pretty much everything that I was consuming on a regular basis came up as highly reactive on that. So mushrooms, I was eating packs of raw mushrooms a day because I thought that that was a very low calorie, low carb, healthy vegetable and I was just eating them raw every day um, with like various vegan dips, you know. So that came up reactive. Um, Soy, garlic, onions, eggplant, um, yeast, gluten, dairy, um, so many different things came up on that food sensitivities test and it just was kind of like an aha moment for me and I was like okay so I guess I'm gonna start eliminating these things even though I really like these foods and it was kind of like a mind fuck because I had to really say okay well what foods can I have 
I need to take out all of these foods that were making me react, the 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 high quantities of pumpkin and carrots and mushrooms and raw zucchini and all these things. Um, I basically realized that I had oxalate poisoning, and that's something that Mindy Pulitzer actually um, asked me about back in the summer. She said, have you looked into oxalates, and maybe that's what you're dealing with, and I didn't even know what that was at the time. She had just brought it to my awareness, and everything that I was eating was high oxalates, almonds, seeds spinach, almond milk, almond cream cheese, almond flour, almond this, almond that. Um, A really good resource to learn about oxalates um, and how they poison your body is Sally, Sally Norton, I believe her name is, Sally Norton, and she's an expert in the field of of oxalates, and uh, she's been on several podcasts and YouTube channels, Um, so once I started to eliminate those oxalate foods, which are pretty much all plants and seeds and nuts, um, and I was eating a lot of those things, um, I started to immediately feel better. My bloating started to go away, and I started to realize, wow, the, the less carb, the less carbs I eat, the more keto I go, the better I feel. So I started to go on Reddit and go into all these keto subreddits, keto for beginners, vegan keto, vegetarian keto, because at at this time I was not consuming meat yet. It was December and January that I really went keto, or at least I tried, but being vegan keto is really, really hard, especially for me, because I couldn't have soy, because that came up on the food sensitivities test. nuts and seeds I didn't want to eat, you know, Um, all these things that vegan keto people survive on, like, you know, that the protein stuff that they survive on, like pea protein, that also came up on my food sensitivities test. So I couldn't have peas, green, green peas, green beans, and a lot of the protein powders that I was consuming have pea protein in them. So Again, it was just one thing after the next, I started to realize that, wow, everything I'm consuming is actually keeping me, you know, swollen and inflamed. So I remember I went through my my cupboards and my pantry one day, and I just started taking everything out and looking at the ingredients and realizing that everything either had pea protein, wheat grass, barley grass, and all these things, again, came up on the Everly sensitivities test. So um, I was pissed. (laughs) I was really fucking pissed because at that point I was like, okay, so what the fuck am I supposed to eat then? Do you sleep too well? Do you find yourself unafraid to go in your creepy basement? Are you too comfortable in the dark? Then come to haunted worlds of fun and get the fear scared back into you. On select nights, September 16th through October 29th, we'll frighten you so bad, you'll never turn the lights off again. Side effects may include sore throat from screaming, elevated heart rate, fear, hiccups, anxiety, hives, sweaty palms, and raised neck hair. Haunt won't last, so hurry and get tickets at worldsoffun.com. With Eversense, the long-term sensor helps me spend less time dealing with my CGM. I only need two sensor changes a year. If you're on multiple doses of insulin, you might greatly benefit from the Eversense E3 CGM system, the only continuous glucose monitoring system that lasts for up to six months with one sensor. Still doing frequent sensor changes? Break free today with Eversense. For important safety information and to learn more about Eversense, please visit eversensediabetes.com slash safety. If everything I'm eating is making me react, what can I eat? And that is when my mental paradigm of food and wellness and what I was putting in my body really shifted and I said do I want to feel better or do I want to keep eating these foods that I think are healthy that you know that I'm just so used to eating Um, so I had to really be honest with myself so I got rid of all those protein powders and stopped using them and I you know started getting all these people in, in the keto subreddit telling me look it just sounds like you need to start eating meat (laughs) you know like if if being vegan keto isn't possible for you then you don't really have a choice and you should start eating meat because I think that's going to make you feel better so 
once you get like 50 people telling you this in the course of a week, you know, because I kept posting and commenting and asking questions and just if every single person is going to tell me this and in my daily life as well, hearing it on podcasts and people talking to me about how it sounds like, you know, veganism isn't helping you, you know. And at that time, I kept looking in the mirror and saying, well, I, I'm my heaviest weight. My, my skin is looking terrible. I'm miserable. I'm depressed. Um, I'm swollen. I, I feel horrible, you know. So I continued to stay low carb. And then once January came around, I started getting this like inner nudge of my... I guess my intuition was telling me to start eating fish and just seeing if that would start helping me feel better. Um, So I started eating fish again. I started with salmon. And this is a question that some of you guys asked me over on Instagram. What, um, what did I, what, how did I start introducing foods? So I'll start by expressing that everybody's different and Some people can just go right into like beef, eggs, and cheese, and butter, like steak and butter gal on on YouTube, and have no issues, but um, I wasn't going to do that because I was still very in my veganism and afraid of of eating, and and honestly, really grossed out, and I told myself I would never eat cow, I would never eat beef, I would never eat any of those things. And I'm still kind of in that mentality as far as pork um, and chicken go, Um, but I'm actually thinking about adding beef in very, very soon. So my process, I added in salmon first, and I didn't even really know like how to cook salmon or whatever, so I, I got canned salmon, started with that, put it on some salads. Immediately, I felt a shift in my body. I mean, and I'm not exaggerating I I really did feel a sense of relief um, because I was getting protein I was getting pure protein Um, and I remember every night I would make my salad with my salmon and I really really enjoyed it and um, I was still eating carbs in the form of vegetables and I wasn't that low carb um, but I started to feel better because I didn't feel the need to eat these like hummuses or like the vegan protein stuff that was causing inflammation. So I really got into the salmon and then um, John, the keto road, he came on my podcast and started talking about sardines and how they're really good. And he planted the seed of, you know, how sardines are really tasty. And and I said, okay, you know, I'm going to try sardines. So I did and I love them. So I slowly started adding these foods, um, tuna, and then I eventually got like frozen salmon filet and cooked it. And I was like, oh my God, like I remember that night when I, when I cooked that salmon filet, like on the stove, that felt different. Um, it, it felt different than how the canned salmon felt because I was literally like eating a piece of, of pure protein meat. So I started to feel better. I started to feel my inflammation go down. I started to feel a shift in my body and it wasn't, it wasn't crazy dramatic. It's not like it all went away. Um, But I think it was a combination of removing the oxalates and the lectins and those plant foods and the seeds and the nuts um, and, you know, slowly tapering that down and then, you know, adding that protein. And I remember I kind of weaned myself off of the mushrooms, as insane as that sounds. I was addicted to eating raw mushrooms. I thought that, you know, I just, I love, I I was actually addicted to eating them. Like I, maybe it's just like the habit, the quant, the quantity that I was eating, the, you know, dipping them in these vegan dips that were also keeping me very bloated. Um, But I remember when I actually made the choice, okay, I'm done with mushrooms. I'm going to figure out other vegetables to eat. So I did. Um, So this was in January that I started doing that. So then the winter starts to come and I start feeling a little bit better each 
each week, to be honest, you know. Um, I was feeling less swollen. I was not feeling as bad. I started feeling like, oh, wow, I think I lost like five pounds just from like going keto. And again, that's very, that's very normal and natural when you go keto. It's usually water weight. Um, in February, I started introducing the electrolytes because I definitely got the keto flu and I started learning about that and how um, magnesium, potassium, and sodium is very, very important when you are keto. So I'm glad that I, that I started using that and I started using LMNT um, packets. Um, and I actually have a discount link for that if you're interested, I'll put that in the show notes. But I drink one of these every single day and I just put it in my big jug of water and I sip it through the day. It has everything you need, the potassium, sodium, and magnesium, and it's a game changer. I mean, instantly I felt my swelling go down. And it's really interesting because a lot of people were telling me, increase your salt, increase your salt. Because if you're not using, if you're, if you're really low on salt and you're sweating in the sauna and you're you know, which I was, I was still using the sauna. So I was completely depleted of my sodium and electrolytes. And when you're depleted of your soda, sodium and your electrolytes, your body is going to try to hold on to every drop of water it possibly can in your body. It's not going to release anything. Um, so when I started increasing my salt, salting my food, salting um, my salads with the salmon, and then using the LMNT packets, um, it really made a huge difference and it was, it was dramatic. It was dramatic. I was like, holy shit, they were right. Like increasing my salt is actually signaling to my body that it doesn't have to hold on for dear life to every morsel of water because it feels safe enough to like circulate it through. So that was a huge game changer for me. And I just kept feeling like my stomach was getting flatter. Um, my bloating went away. I was starting to see my abs come through a little bit more. Um, then I had to move again <laughs> because I was subletting um, another apartment in Miami and my friend was moving back in. So I had to move at the end of March and then um, we had a death in the family like right after that. I'm not even kidding, like the day after. So me and my mom moved everything back to, I moved back to Tampa because I couldn't find an apartment in Miami. I couldn't find an apartment with the way that things were going with the housing market and inflation. And that was very, very stressful on my body as well. Um, so I moved back home and the next day we found out that my aunt just tragically died. So it was a lot of emotional and physical stress with moving back home and then the death and then going up north for a week and it was just the most challenging couple months of my life I think because I I felt like my world was just caving in um, because I finally got my life back situated in Miami and teaching yoga equinox and my my classes were packed and everything was going great but then I couldn't find an apartment so it was almost like you know my life was just kind of like things were ending you know I just felt like well my life is fucked but I think everything happens for a reason and I think um, I'm supposed to be here for a reason because my healing my physical healing my thyroid stuff my Hashimoto stuff actually has gotten a lot better since I haven't been in Miami and since I've been living at home and I think part of that is because um I haven't been using the sauna <laughs> like I used to. Um, I do have a Therisage sauna at home sauna. It's outside um, on my porch, but I don't use it every day. I use it maybe once a week, maybe. And I think my body just really needed a chance to rest and heal. Um, so March and April, I was eating fish, using collagen powders. And what's funny is... Um, wow, I didn't really put this together, but when I was up north for my aunt's funeral, we stayed at my uncle's house, and my aunt had, like, a huge cupboard full of, like, teas and herbs and supplements and powders, and she had uh, an entire box of vital proteins, regular collagen powder from beef, and something nudged me. Maybe it was my aunt's presence and her spirit, but I heard my intuition say, just start using those. Um, 
you know, they're here, you're going to be here for a week. So I started putting one of those in my, in my uh, matcha every day. And I started to feel a difference. And I, I know that this sounds crazy, but I started to feel a difference in my body and, and my swelling that week when I was in New Jersey for the funeral. And the only thing that I changed was I added that collagen. I was, I was intermittent fasting at that time too. I started intermittent fasting and that helped a lot. And my swelling and my inflammation and my bloating and my digestion all got better. So again, these shifts, the, the seafood and the collagen really helped a lot. And I was being consistent with the electrolytes every day too. April and May came around and um, that is when I started not taking the Armour thyroid anymore and Alex, my friend, sent me some of her extra nature thyroid and I started to take that and I started to immediately feel better. Again, it takes a lot of trial and error with um, healing thyroid. And then, um, yeah, I, I continued to eat fish. I continued to use the collagen powders. I got, uh, I got stocked up with vital proteins, collagen powders. And, you know, the fact that I started to consume these, I think was really helping not only my digestion, but just my overall health, um, my hair, my skin, my nails. Um, at this time, I started to intermittent fast a little bit more and deeper and longer, and that helped a lot as well. Um, then I started to, oh, and the only cardio that I was doing at this point was doing walks. I wasn't running. I wasn't using the sauna. I wasn't jogging. I wasn't doing any of that. I wasn't doing power yoga. I wasn't teaching yoga. I was just walking. So... Um, then I, uh, I got a pet sitting gig in Miami in June and July for five weeks, and I started to work on my, um, my keto stuff a little bit more. I started taking things out. I learned about polyphenols um, from the ADP Project podcast, and I started to realize that all of the, you know, even like some of the foods that I was still consuming, like carrots and um, pumpkin, like I was still dabbling in, in some of those things, and I said to myself, you know what, I'm really going to lower this down to the vegetables that have the lowest oxalates and lectins. So I lowered it all down, and I was down to um, all sorts of lettuce and greens and leafy greens, um, cucumbers, celery, avocados, olives, um, and then I was still consuming, and I still am consuming, um, some vegan products like coconut milk, coconut yogurt that's unsweetened, um, uh, nutritional yeast, um, and then all the fish. So my diet right now is kind of an elimination diet, and it's a paleo keto elimination kind of diet, and I've been learning more now about the ketovore and carnivore diets from people like Dr. Ken Berry and his wife, Nisha Berry, who both have YouTube channels, um, and they're, they've been on like tons of podcasts. Well, Dr. Berry has. Um, and, I, and I've been, and I was learning about keto and fasting from people like Mindy Peltz um, and the Keto Camp podcast. And I just started to really recognize that the less vegetables I ate, the better I felt. And this meant that I needed to start increasing my animal products. So I started adding in egg whites, um, hard-boiled eggs, um, egg life wraps. Um, still not doing dairy, still not doing that. But again, I, and then I started doing bone broth powders. And I felt really good with the bone broth powders. It really helped my digestion. So when I was in Miami in June and July, I really did like a huge, like, I feel like I really up-leveled my healing. Um, I got a lot of sun. I did a lot of walking. I didn't use the sauna too much. Um, and I just really focused on like healing with the polyphenols and fasting and like really focusing on health and protein and fish and being low carb and those things really helped um I, I decided to stop drinking decaf coffee um I start, decided 
I took out caffeine a, a while ago, but I started to, to stop with the, the matcha and the decaf because I started to feel like it was giving me a reaction, um, like cortisol spike, insulin spike, which it definitely was because once I stopped consuming the, the decaf coffee and the matcha, I instantly felt better. And I heard that from somebody in the carnivore keto space who said, um, even decaf coffee can make somebody react because of the mold and the chemicals and lo and behold, it was. So any kind of caffeine, even the decaf was making me react. So I started to, to just shift to total herbal coffee or sorry, herbal teas, um, and herbal, um, powders. So I've been using the Anima Mundi herbal coffee powder. It's called the happiness powder. I'll put a discount code for that in the show notes. I think it's GAB10. And then um, all of my Ticino teas and just all the herbal teas that are really tasty. I have a discount code for that too. It's GAB Love Flow. Um, And while I was in Miami over the summer, I did the Zuma Parasite Detox, and this is when I started to feel a huge, huge up level. And um, so it was, you know, I was eating the fish, I was using the bone broth powders, I was using the collagen powders, so I was keto with, with those meat, you know, sources. And the Parasite Detox immediately made me feel like I had you know, released something. I mean, literally. So I started taking that and that was the first round and I just actually ended my second round of it. So I've done two full bottles of the Parasite Detox and there's actually like over 180 to 200 people right now who are all doing the Zuma Parasite Detox um, because I posted a lot of reels on Instagram and um, so we're all kind of doing it together and there's over 200 people now doing the Zuma parasite detox and if you're one of those people um, feel free to dm me your success story how you're feeling and i'm going to start sharing those success stories because um yeah it's been a game changer for me because i definitely had and have parasites and this this tincture the parasite detox tincture has um, polyphenols in it and very very strong powerful herbs that help clear out those parasites. And if you're living with parasites um, and you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to fix your thyroid or your autoimmune conditions, you can't really do that if you have parasites that are wreaking havoc in your body. And I didn't realize that until I really started to get serious with the Zuma detox um, cleanse. And if you go over to the Zuma, zumanutrition.com, you can use um, code GAB15 on any products there. Right now, I'm doing the Candida cleanse. So my the order that I did um, that I'm doing them is I did two of the Parasite detoxes back to back. So that's two bottles, and now I'm doing the the Candida cleanse. And my stomach is flat. My digestion is so much better. I'm not getting bloated after I'm eating. I mean, I used to get so bloated after eating anything and everything. It would look like I was pregnant. Um, so yeah, so now we are in, you know, we're moving into the fall. So it's been quite some time now that I have been eating fish and protein and collagen powders, and I'm starting to, um, get ready to add beef in ground beef, um, because that's very easy on the digestion. And one of the questions that you guys asked is how do you feel not bad and and like mentally able to eat the meat if if you know you were so like you if you had such a meat aversion before um and for me after listening to so many podcasts about the science about how the body works about ancestral diets about gut health Um, about how the body reacts to lectins and oxalates and and all these things, it just started to click for me. And I had to really be honest with myself um, because 
the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. And that was what I was doing for several years. The sauna, the working out, the being vegan, the raw, the this, the that, the big salads, wondering why my stomach was so descended and why I was in so much pain. So what I was doing wasn't working and I was so sick and tired of feeling like shit. Um, and that's, that's, a, that's what Michaela pa Peterson talks about a lot too. I mean, she was just so tired of feeling like shit. That's why she went on the lion diet, which is just beef, salt, and water. I mean, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have to be that extreme um, for me, but I had to really take inventory of what's working and what's not. And is it worth it? You know, if I can't function, if I can't live my life, if I can't teach yoga, if I can't get out of bed in the morning, then what is that? That's not giving me a life that I want to live. And if that means that I need to shift out of veganism, then so be it. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of haters and people who don't understand it. But to be honest, when I posted that, that reels on my Instagram a few days ago, I got a really awesome response. So many of you guys had you know, shared your experience on that reels and said, yeah, I was vegan for four or five, six, seven, eight years, whatever it was. And then I started to feel immediately better once I stopped being vegan and started adding meat. And it's, it's like all of these testimonials. I mean, it's not, it's not just in our heads. We, you know, some people aren't meant to be vegan. Maybe there are some people who are meant to be vegan and they feel great. I'm not one of those people. And I gave it a shot and I was vegan for, um, over seven years um, and vegetarian for even longer so at the end of the day I had to just be honest with myself and say what's more important my health my well-being my life my purpose um, or is it being vegan and for me um, my veganism was never it was more of like a kind of like grossed out that I was eating uh, an animal like it wasn't about eating animals because I know that that's actually a normal process of evolution so if I'm out with somebody and I was vegan I didn't care if they were eating meat because I know that that's normal for me I was just doing it because I thought that's what was going to be healthy for my body because I was trying to feel my best um, but even to this day I don't think I'm going to ever eat pork because I just really I'm not I just don't think I will and maybe my maybe I'll change my mind maybe that will change um, I don't think I'll eat chicken I, I'm not a big fan of that I have eaten it obviously in, in my childhood um, but I'm gonna start eating things like beef um, ground beef beef jerky um, I'm gonna try those carnivore crisps I'm gonna just be very simple and basic and get like frozen all beef patties and just start small um, I have a I have a air fryer here at my mom's, so that will help. Um, so, yeah, and I, I just want to share, like, my health issues have all been getting way better and less intense as I started adding in things. I'm now eating full eggs, not just egg whites. I'm eating the yolks. Um, let's see. I'm going to try some grass-fed butter soon. Um so yeah, I'm, I'm doing what I can and I'm, I'm feeling good. I eat sardines and salmon all the time, every single day. Um, and I'm enjoying how I'm feeling in my body because I feel this release of inflammation and weight and pain. You know, my, my joints aren't as swollen. My legs aren't, aren't, aren't swollen like they used to be. I just feel better in my clothes and in my body and if you listen to people like Amber O'Hearn, she talks about how the keto diet and carnivore in particular can help with um, bipolar and depression. And I definitely have depression and anxiety, and I've noticed that I can, I'm more calm and I'm, I'm able to cope a little bit better with a more clear head um, since, be, since going keto since going really low carb and eliminating all those vegetables except for the ones that I listed a little bit ago, like the leafy greens and the olives and um, cucumbers and avocados. But 
Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be making this episode if everything that I was doing wasn't working. I want to share this with you guys because if you are, you know, thinking about leaving veganism or you're just thinking about going keto or you're just trying to figure out why you feel like shit, um, I wanted to share, you know, my evolution over the last year or so because I've come a long way and I'm ready to talk about it and I'm ready to... Um, share more about it on Instagram and hopefully talk with more people in the carnivore community um, about mental health and healing inflammation and autoimmune issues. If you also have Hashimoto's or thyroid issues, you could um, follow Nisha, Dr. Ken Berry's wife on YouTube. Um, yeah, those are two really great resources. Um, Dr. Anthony Chaffee is another great resource. Steak and Butter Gal on YouTube. Um, Kelly Hogan is a good resource. Um, e Edie Fox is a great resource. The Black um, Carnivore. Uh, so there's a lot of carnivore people, and you don't you know, have to just go full carnivore. I'm not going full carnivore. I'm still going to eat my veg. I'm still going to have those those, you know, vegan things that I still eat, but I'm going to be increasing my meat and I'm going to see how I feel. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to start feeling better and better and better as I start increasing my meat. Oh, another one that you can follow is X Plant Eater. She's great. She's, um, I'm actually going to do, I think, a live with her or something. Um, so yeah, just, we have to change this do dogmatic way of learning about food and nutrition Nutrition by Judy, Judy Cho, another great resource. Um, she has a podcast, Nutrition with Judy, and she has recovered from an eating disorder. So she actually talks a lot about eating disorder recovery, sugar addiction, food addiction, binging, um, carnivore, and how it can help you, keto. So yeah, these are all the things that I've been um, listening to because, and I'm happy that I'm finally starting to see things clearly for, for my, health, my health, my body. So I hope this helped. And um, if you guys want to connect with me on Instagram, uh, Gab Love Flow, feel free to DM me. And uh, I hope you guys are doing well and you can start feeling better on your healing journey. All right. Thanks for listening. And we will connect soon. She said it's okay. I got some wilderness skills beneath my bed. She said she used to be a part of the scout team. They nearly meet a leader one time. They didn't have enough thread to sew the patches on. She said, you know how you heard about that family that burned down in that house? Well, that was her.
With Eversense, the long-term sensor helps me spend less time dealing with my CGM. I only need two sensor changes a year. If you're on multiple doses of insulin, you might greatly benefit from the Eversense E3 CGM system, the only continuous glucose monitoring system that lasts for up to six months with one sensor. Still doing frequent sensor changes? Break free today with Eversense. For important safety information and to learn more about Eversense, please visit eversensediabetes.com safety.